Welcome to this channel dedicated to mindfulness, wellness, and communications coaching. I'm Coach Erin, and today I'm excited to give you a lesson on the four distinct styles of communication. They're passive, aggressive, passive aggressive, and assertive. You've probably heard of all four of these in passing, but we're gonna do a deep dive on this topic. Because if you're here, you're probably like me, and you share the belief that communications is a cornerstone of our relationships, our professional success, and our inner well being. And understanding these four communication styles can significantly help you in both your professional and personal life. But before we get started on this lesson, go ahead and like and subscribe to this channel where we help you breathe well, live well, and speak well. You will find that I'm deeply passionate about guiding you in ways to conquer stress and anxiety so you can communicate with ease. Leveraging my background in communications, mindfulness, and wellness coaching, I have crafted two private coaching programs, Breathe Well and Live Well, this is a comprehensive 60 day coaching program designed to help you address disordered breathing and anxiety. This sometimes happens when people are also scared to speak. They have the fear of public speaking. The other program I have is speak. Well, this is a six week private coaching program. This program is tailored to boost your confidence and ease and effectively conveying your message. We learn the technical skills of public speaking, as well as the mindset and mindfulness tools you need to succeed as a speaker. I have over 17 years in the coaching industry, so I'm here to support you in achieving your goals. So if you're interested in the speak well or breathe well, live well coaching program, go ahead and book a complimentary coaching call with me and the link is in the description. So let's get that aside and let's move on to the lesson, starting with passive communication. This style of communication involves sidestepping conflict and refraining from expressing your own needs and feelings. You're holding back in a way, you're being passive. And this is when you prioritize others' needs over your own needs. For instance, picture yourself in a team meeting with a brilliant idea, and then you hold back and you don't express that idea for fear of what everybody else is going to think of you. This would be more of a passive communication style. Sometimes you find you're hiding and you have a lot of fear to speak and to voice your own opinions when you are communicating passively. Sometimes it's with certain people or certain areas where you tend to lean more towards that passive communication style. So just being aware of this is really powerful. Let's get into the next communication style. This one on the exact opposite scale. So you have passive communication, now you're looking at aggressive communication. This style is marked by overly dominant confrontational approach, a little aggressive. That's why it's called aggressive communication. So some people might call this bulldozing other. Consider a scenario where you were handed a project with a tight deadline and you just lash out at your team members, demanding that they work harder without considering their perspectives. This would be more of aggressive communication. Again, we can all fall into different categories depending on the circumstances and who we're communicating with. So it's important to understand the differences between all of them. And that's what this lesson is about. Next communication style is passive aggressive. It literally combines the both. This communication style is a little more sneaky. This is an indirect style often categorized by hidden hostility or sarcasm. For instance, if a coworker consistently takes credit for your ideas, instead of addressing it directly or assertively, you resort to leaving a sarcastic note or comments on their work. This is a classic case of passive aggressive behavior. Passive aggressive behavior can also happen in our interpersonal relationships in between spouses or in with a partner or with our children. So if you are being indirect and then I think of it as being a little bit more volatile. So you're being passive, passive, passive until you're not. And then you're really aggressive. You're passive, 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 and then you're not, and you're really aggressive. So that would be more of a passive aggressive communication style. And this type of communication style is not always effective. Let's get into what is effective, assertive communication. So what's the gold standard of communication styles? I just said it, assertive communication. This approach strikes the balance between expressing your thoughts, your needs and feelings clearly and respectfully while respecting the rights of others. For example, in that same tight deadline scenario that I mentioned for aggressive communication, if you were to use assertive communication, you would discuss the situation with your team and work together collaboratively on a solution that would benefit everybody instead of blaming and shaming your team like aggressive communication tends to lead to. 
So that's how you would handle it assertively. Now that we have identified the four styles, let's go deeper into the characteristics of each style. We want to examine specific actions, nonverbal cues, underlining beliefs, emotional states, and the ultimate goals when you're communicating in each of the four styles. Let's start with passive communication. So the actions we see is that they avoid conflict, agree with others to maintain peace, they refrain from expressing their own needs and opinions and desires. Their nonverbal communication is slouch posture, avoiding eye contact. They might speak softly and display a hesitant body language. Their beliefs are that they fear confrontation. They have a desire to avoid offending others and they might have low self-esteem. The emotions here, resentment, frustration, feeling unheard or overlooked. Goals, to maintain harmony at any cost, avoid confrontation and preserve relationships. Now, aggressive communication. Here, the actions are, they confront others aggressively too much. They over confront. They employ blame, criticizing, intimidation, and dominate conversations. Nonverbal communication is that they're going to raise their voice, point fingers, invade personal space, exhibit dominating body language, penetrating eye contact. Their beliefs are the belief in the need to control to dominate or to win. This is often driven by insecurity or a need for power. Their emotions are often anger, frustration, a desire for superiority. The goals are to assert control. This often is at the expense of others and they want to win their arguments or situations without considering the human that they're trying to overtake, the other person on the other side of that conversation. Now let's look at passive aggressive communication. The actions are going to be indirectly expressing anger or frustration. They use sarcasm, enable a subtle sabotage, or they deliver veiled criticism. Nonverbal communication is they're going to smile when angry. They might roll their eyes, make snide comments, and they appear indifferent. Beliefs here are fear of confrontation, a desire to appear pleasant on the surface, but vent frustration indirectly. And their emotions are anger resentment, passive resistance. Their goals are to express dissatisfaction or irritation indirectly, often in a way to avoid direct confrontation. Again, think of what I said earlier, where they're passive until they're not, and then they're aggressive. And so sometimes they will also present in nonverbal communication as passive until they're not, and then they shoot up to really aggressive in their nonverbal communication styles. Finally, let's take a look at assertive communication. The actions here are they express their thoughts, needs, and feelings clearly and respectfully. They actively listen to others. So in order to express your thoughts, needs, and feelings clearly, you need to be aware of them first. So it takes a little bit of self-awareness to be assertive. For assertive nonverbal communication, they're going to maintain eye contact, employ open and receptive body language, speak confidently, but not aggressively. For the beliefs, they believe in open, honest communication, respect for others, that others have equal rights and should be heard equally, and they have an importance or a desire for collaboration. For their emotions, they're gonna be confident, they're gonna have self-respect and empathy towards others. So by now you might have a really good understanding of the four different styles of communication. You might even be aware of which one you slip into when you're under stress. And hopefully you can see that assertive communication is how we want to be communicating for the most part in our professional and personal conversations. That's why I want to finish today's lesson with sharing some tips for how you can become more assertive in your communication. Because the reality is we can all slip into that passive, the aggressive, passive aggressive communication, especially when we feel stressed or we feel like our needs are not being met or that we're not being heard. But it's so essential to strive for assertiveness in both your personal and professional communications. Here's some tips on how to do that. Let's start with self-awareness, understanding your needs, your boundaries, your feelings. This is crucial to help you communicate what you need to communicate. Next, active listening, paying close attention to others' perspectives and really listening to them shows respect and that you understand and you want to connect. This makes others feel heard and can be really helpful in assertive communication. Tip number three is to practice. Like any other skill, practice makes permanent. Start using more assertive communication in low stakes situations and then gradually work your way up to those important conversations. 
Next, use I statements to express what you feel, think, or need. This allows you to take ownership of your thoughts and feelings. Examples of I statements are, I feel overwhelmed when there are sudden changes to the project plan. I think we should consider revising our market strategy to reach a wider audience. I need more information about the upcoming event to be better prepared. Examples of you statements, which is what you want to avoid, you statements make people feel defensive immediately because you're coming at them and telling them how they feel. Here's some examples. You always make last minute changes and it's impossible to work with you. This is a you statement and it might make the other person defensive. Another example, you should change the marketing strategy. It's not effective. This is a you statement. You can come across critical and judgmental. Another example, you never provide enough information and it's frustrating. This is a you statement and can make the other person feel accused or blamed. By using I statements, you express your thoughts and feelings without directly accusing or blaming others. This can lead to more productive, collaborative, and constructive communication. It encourages open dialogue and problem solving rather than defensiveness. Next tip, stay calm. Keep your emotions in check and maintain a calm and composed demeanor. During challenging conversations, consider things like mindfulness tools, breath work, guided meditation to help you manage your stress and get more of that mind-body connection. On my channel, you'll find tons of videos on breath work and mindfulness that can help you with this skill. And I'll link a few in the description below. The next tip is to seek win-win solutions. Approach conflicts with a mindset that aims for mutually beneficial resolutions, not winning the argument, and not being somebody who's just gonna roll over and not voice your opinion. The next tip is to set boundaries. Clearly communicate your limits. What are your limits? What are you comfortable with? Whether it's at work or in your personal life, this can be really helpful in assertive communication. So I hope you found this lesson really helpful that you could see the four distinct communication styles. You learned some tips to be more assertive. And remember, assertive communication is the key to healthier, more productive interactions, both in your personal and professional life. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, stay connected for more of this type of content breathe well, live well, and speak well. And if you can, comment what your favorite tip was and what you found the most helpful in this video so we can all learn and grow together. And if you have any tips, please include those too. Thanks for being here. Bye.